one of the funniest episodes of Black Mirror. And no, them, I'm not saying this, a lot of people say the funniest. The, the funniest. funniest. Oh, there are a lot of episodes that still kind of haunt my dreams. Um, I mean, the, the very first episode with the pig, I think, leaves a, ver a very big mark on everyone who sees it. But the one that um, that I think about kind of sadly the most is the one with Domino Gleason, where his character dies and then his girlfriend brings him back via downloads of his internet presence and then texts him and then can talk on the phone with them and then like orders a human version of him, but it's just not quite him and so she hates it. Like it's just, it's such a haunting episode and I'm such a big fan of his, so that that sticks with me. I'm gonna be very boring. I'm claustrophobic. There's one with, there's a guy in a super small room because that's where people live then with these huge screens. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I, I don't I don't like to watch it a lot because I don't like scary. But I even like this even worse because I don't care how big the screen is. I was feeling very anxious with the claustrophobia. Um, the first episode I watched was the first episode. It was because I was working with Rory Kinnear at the time, who played the PM, who had the who had the little bestiality scene with Barnyard oh Animal. God. Yeah. <laughs> he said, You gotta watch the show. It's really messed up. And I was semi-familiar with Charlie's work before that, just because of his, like, you know, his political satire. And, and uh, I was, yeah, clearly very interested in what he was gonna do next. <laughs> I watched Playtest, which is about a video game uh, trial. Yeah, it's about, it's this guy is try doing a trial on a video game and he, um, due to technological stuff, sort of loses his mind. And I watched that during a time that I think I was very emotionally sensitive and it triggered me so hard. I, I, I like couldn't finish the episode and I think it took me months to return to it because I was so upset by it. Because my greatest fear truly is to like lose my mind. And for some reason that episode really impacted me. I think for me, it was um, either Hang the DJ, which I thought absolutely slapped so hard. It was just across, I mean, that's the, that's a disservice to describe it that way. But it was like, by the end of it, I, I was like, yeah, well, I guess true love you'd break a simulation for. And they just left it such a, it was, it was one of the hopeful ones in regards to like them. I'm pretty sure at the end, do they, is it a match that's worthy enough? Yeah, right? And then he approaches yeah. her at the bar? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. For a moment, I was like, oh, maybe it was like a 97.6, and then he walked away. But because, like, I, I think it was such a beautiful way to describe what true love is. It's like someone you break the simulation for. Uh, the first one that I watched was Be Right Back. So that was the one I remember. And it really, you know, I thought it was an, a beautiful episode about grief, and it just, I'm crying. I was like, what is this Black Mirror thing that I've just watched? And then I went back and started watching all of them in order after that, seeing that episode. I remember watching it in real time on TV um, when the first episode came out, because I, I was a big fan of Nathan Barley, um, which was one of Charlie's uh, previous shows. So I remember watching, I remember being like, oh, well, it's a new Charlie Brooks show, I watched that. Um, and yeah, I remember being just like being blown away by like how like intense it was and how like realistic it felt and how it felt like it was set in the future but wasn't set in the future but you know like could this ever happen type mm -hmm. thing and like the amount of time like the amount of time something has either come out in the news pig gate etc or um or like has come to fruition just in terms of like our um behavioral patterns it's, it, it's really satisfying, so let's just hope that we don't spark off the, uh, the, the apocalypse. apocalypse. I think we were more confused because now you're like seeing it, it's being explained to you with a lot of images. Me, I'm a dummy with, with the, everything, with technology. So I was like, I don't understand what's happening, but 
I understand what I'm playing and who I'm playing doesn't really understand what's happening either. So it's okay. We <laughs> so can go with that. Yeah. We were really lucky with our episode because that it was, so you know, funny. one of the funniest episodes of Black Mirror. And no, them, I'm not saying this, a lot of people say the funniest. The, the funniest. funniest. I stand correct. Episode in the history of Black Mirror. <laughs> we're starting a new trend. We're starting a new trend now. <laughs> I mean, imagine this one as Alexis, Rose from Schitt's Creek. It's really my only other role, let's be honest, but I would still love to see her play Alexis. I would love to see that. <laughs> say Frida for me. I'll say Frida for you. <laughs> I'll say Frida for you, and I'll say Beatrice for me. I, so I can't sing. Selma, some, for some reason, thinks I can sing. She can I, sing. I, Oh my God, she can dance. Okay, so she used to be a dancer. No, no. So, so I can't sing, but I love karaoke, and so my go-to song is "Goodbye Earl" by the Chicks because you can kind of just like twangly scream. It's like a character. You can be a character, and so that's my go-to. What about you? I like. I will survive. That's nice. I will survive. Yeah, I, I, I gotta. Keep singing that to myself. I've had to do, um, do that so many times in life. So I have a special place in my heart. It just for comes it. naturally. Yeah. Go Ooh, ahead. Okay. So in the car, I love, uh, you know, the band Free? You know, Free? Right? Is that them? Like, like, uh, okay. It's going to be obscure coming from. It's you. not obscure. <laughs> They're a great rock band. Uh, yeah, and Highway Revisited. I love that album. It's great. Yeah. So it's like, you know, proper like rock, really. Rock. Yeah. Mine is dependent on the mood, but the first thing that's come to my mind is a little Mariah Carey. Ooh. When you walk by every night, walking and looking fine, ooh, ooh. That's, okay. that's one you could get behind. I did not realize you were going to sing. Well, that I was, didn't remember the name of the song. So. Sweet, sweet medicine, babe. What's the name of the song? Somebody help me. I'm sorry. Oh, gosh. I also, I also clearly, clearly can't. Oh, move. gosh. I'm well, so anyway. That song is what I would bump right now. You did real I good, that was great. Thanks. <laughs> um, us, us, us. Like, as Ange and Papa. <laughs> That's such a funny question. <laughs> I think we'd be How delirious. Would you deal with the I think we'd kind of like die as the world goes up in flames. We'd just be laughing hysterically yeah. and finding the humor in it somehow. Hopefully it's that thing of like, oh, well, I'll do one last thing before you die, as opposed to just like panicking the, yeah. your last seconds away, which is what I fear I would probably do. In, yeah, when yeah. it comes to it, like, that's what we would do. But I like to think no, we I have think, it. I think you'd, you're like quite zen and, you know, bigger picture. So I think you'd, you'd you know. You, do you think I'd say something profound and Probably not say something pro as profound, like the final. maybe like, <laughs> Can I give you, yeah, maybe do your, but your best self tape <laughs> that no one ever gets to see. <laughs> Did I get pummeled? Did I really get pummeled? I mean, he gave me like a fun. little, like, yeah. I was okay. <laughs> I was okay. But it's great to work with Aaron. I mean, Aaron's such a lovely, um, like, easygoing and positive person. And to have his sort of positive energy on set while we were filming such bleak stuff was uh, important, maybe. <laughs> it was good. It, it helped buoy the atmosphere on set because it was pretty It was pretty dark, obviously. I, I totally agree. He's such a lovely person. We, we've known each other for such a long time, but we've never worked together before. Um, so this was actually a really special experience because he and his family were there and um, we have children the same age and I was very pregnant while we were making this and um, and so our, gir our our girls were playing with each other while, while we were working and then um, it was just, yeah, it was a very, very sp special experience um, and a very sort of like calm, peaceful um, set, uh, which is, you know, kind of funny given the subject matter, I would say. Oh, I freaked out. I thought that was one of the craziest things ever. It's the most Black Mirror thing to have happened. And I think the tweeting it out was just based on like the news I heard. And I was in the middle of Top Gun Press. And so I was like dealing with the media at all times and paparazzi everywhere. And so um, the moment that I was told that I got it after the tweet, my manager basically 
she told me like, hey, you're doing like this, this episode's happening. And then she sent me off to a red carpet. And so like maybe 30 seconds later, it was just like flash, 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 flash. And I was like, oh shit, I gotta start by studying now. Um, but I, 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 yeah, it was one of the, the craziest things of just like, I've been such a fan of the show as everyone has, like it's, Charlie's such a, a mastermind. Um, so being able to do it and doing it in this way specifically, um, which is wild at one point, they didn't know I'd be able to do it or that I wouldn't say that I'd say no because I was doing press. And so they screenshotted the tweet and they're like, he would do it. And that's finally the reason why they sent the offer. And I was just like, wait, so there was a chance that I was not gonna do an episode because people thought I wouldn't do it. That's insane. Um, <laughs> there's a few things. Yeah. There's, there's um, uh, a few things, but one that will live in my mind rent free for the rest of my life, which we will keep between us. Um, there is a song called the Inadare about Inadare by Inadare. That has just been replanted in my memory by you. <laughs> it's something that I've locked away. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Written the, by Samuel Lee. The Ian Adair song. It's terrifying. W no, we're not going to sing it. No, 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 no. Sorry. It's just for us. <laughs> Sorry, MTV. <laughs> when Sorry. we release it officially, you'll be the first to know. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We actually own the song, so. <laughs> the rights, yeah. Yeah, it's coming soon. <laughs> there's what, um, there's, so earlier on, or early in the episode, there's a scene where Garp is like um, showing uh, Nida what the apocalypse would look like. Mm. And we kind of like pan through to the apartment being on fire and it goes out the window and you see the world on fire and then blah, blah, blah. Um, there's a certain <laughs> amount of CGI in that, but also they actually set the actual set on fire. They burned the actual set. So yeah. like- So I did it once running around an empty set and I was like, okay, great. So they're just gonna CGI it. And then that will be the, and they're like, so and we are burning the set. And I was like, what? Um, and there was like actual firemen and real fire and it, it looked incredible. Um, so I didn't feel like I had to sort of act that day. I was reacting to what was in front of me, which was a burning building. I am now determined, because we've talked about this a little bit this morning already, to make a documentary about the experience of the first human being to <laughs> recognize their own mortality. Like, at what point in evolution did that come where consciousness really kicked in and they were like, oh, I'm alive and I'm gonna die. And like, what's my purpose? You know, because other animals, they like eat and procreate. We can do all those things as well, but we're also like, we don't, we're not prey. We're not predators really. Yeah. Like when you think about like, what is my purpose? It's not to feed another animal. It's just to like be, but then you realize it's like, ah, oh, evolu like in, in the evolutionary, like, you know, spectrum, I'm here at the end. There's nothing beyond me. So do I have a purpose? So I wanna know what happened to the first human being who was like, damn, mortality, yeah. you know? Yeah, the first one who realized that. I'd watch that. I'd right? Yeah, that. me too, I'd watch that. I'm really getting into it at this point. I'm actually is, kind of determined. There is kind of a treatment a coming out here. Yeah, you know? I think we need to sell this. Netflix? <laughs>